Welcome back to another episode of Be a Better Game Dev. In this episode, we will be talking about Tick. We will explain what Tick is, how it is used, some bad practice examples, some solutions to these bad practice examples, showing some ways you can identify possible Tick related problems, and lastly, explaining how you can tweak Tick for your needs. So let's check it out. Welcome. So let's talk a little bit about Tick. In this case here, I have set up a little bit of a playground and here I have a, an actor. So before starting, I want to, to keep this video a little bit shorter. I have tried to simplify some things, maybe overly simplify some things uh, to keep us from getting lost in the details. So if you hear something that makes you stop and go, mm, actually, you're probably right, but I tried to keep it as accurate and as short as I could at the same time. So starting off, what is the event tick? This is the event tick. Tick is an event that is available in all actors and components. Tick is the event that will fire every frame that is rendered in the game. So a game that runs at 120 frames per second will call Tick on each actor and component 120 times per second. A game running at 60 frames per second will call the Tick on each actor and component 60 times per second and so on. So this leads us into the first possible issue with having Tick. Performance. Performance is one of the most important aspects of software development, and you always want to consider it. You want to strive to have as little code running in Tick as possible, uh, since it will be called so often. It can easily escalate to have a negative impact on your performance as the amount of code in Tick increase, as well as the number of actors and components. Now, that leads us naturally into the second issue with Tick, which is maintainability. Uh, if you have a lot of code in your tick, let's say this is our tick and this is what we're running. If you have a lot of code in your tick, then changing or removing existing code can be tricky because the nature of tick uh, is infrequent because of the number of frames can vary. Uh, this means that at some point you, you can realize that it's going to be problematic. Um, if you're needing to change and remove code, that can be difficult in itself. But also if you realize that you have something that really needs to be in tick to function, then it might be difficult to add it into your chain of logic that you already have existing. So having your tick clean and as small or non-existing as possible will make anything that you need to put in easier as well. The third issue with tick uh, is that you can actually get erroneous functionality. Uh, it is normal to feel, especially when you're starting out, that putting code into Tick is an easy way to see if things work, to prototype. Uh, this is common when knowledge and understanding of existing uh, events is weak. But despite this, there are actually edge cases that can get things to be working improperly because you're making use of Tick. So let's take a look at three different bad practice examples. After having gone through the three examples, we'd go through each one of them and see what alternatives we have to make use of them to remedy the issues that we have. And if you want to quiz yourself, for example, you can try to guess on how you would go about solving these issues as we go through the examples and see if you got it right. So let's take a look at some. In our first example, we have a character with a health bar and some health, and we can walk into this cube of doom, which is a pain causing volume, which will be changing our health as we stand in it. This actor has some code inside of it, which is making use of the event tick. So first of all, we're taking any damage that we get from the pain causing volume and changing our health to correspond to that. Then we are telling our controller, what is our current health on the tick event? Uh, this is just calling the controller, which in turn gets the information about our current health, and then it's funneling that information uh, further to our UI. So this is essentially all the important part of the code. We don't need to look at the UI really. Uh, so this is the first example. Let's take a look at our second one. Our second example is this cube, which is moving. So this could be something like rotating, moving. It could be something completely different. It's just a matter of some kind of translation or affecting that's happening inside of an actor. So in this case, we have a blueprint called moving actor here. On, on the tick event, what we're doing, we're running this piece of code. It might look like a lot, but it's very simple. We're essentially taking our position and we're saying we should be changing it a little bit depending on a direction and a speed, essentially. Setting our new location and then checking if we have moved 
far enough to make our direction change essentially. So that's that's all that we are doing here. And this is our second example. Let's move to our third. Our third example won't have a visual representation, it's just going to be the code. In this case we have our vent tick. We have some code that's running here that is not really of any importance. Then we have a branch that's going off here doing something in one direction and having a delay in the other direction. This is the key part. So let's see what we can actually do about these three examples. So starting off with our character that has his health being reduced when we're inside of this uh, box here. So if I key press my UI to appear, we can see I go into the box and everything seems to be working fine. There doesn't seem to be an obvious visual problem here, right? Uh, however, if we go in and actually check our blueprint for our character and see the event tick here, what is happening here is we're having our health updated all the time on tick, making sure that the, the UI knows what our health is. But our health isn't really important to keep track of this often because it isn't changing that often. This is an example of a performance problem. This is something that you handle usually with leaning more towards event-based programming. So to visualize the issue here, we'll go into our wid widget for our health and we'll go to our graph and we'll say that every time it gets called to be updated, we'll just print out a string and see what happens. So playing now, putting up our UI, you can see that my screen is now getting spammed with the health is getting updated. And this despite me not actually having my health being changed, right? Going in here, it will still continue spamming. Some of these times it will be accurate because my health has actually been updated. But you can see that this is pretty obviously over the top. This is overkill. What do we do instead? Well, again, I said event-based programming is a better approach to something that needs to have its information updated uh, irregularly, but uh, not that often. In this case, we have a tick here. If we just disconnect the tick and instead say, well, this is the point in time we're actually taking damage. That makes sense to have logic there. We move our code to actually call there and we run. You can see that when I bring up my UI, nothing is happening. And when I run into my box of doom over here, you can see that I'm getting a tick, not a tick, an update every now and then being sent to update my UI because it is updating now every time that my health is actually changing inside of my character. So back to our second example with our moving box. What is the problem here? Well, the problem here is actually erroneous code. You might not notice it, but if we actually go back here into our code for this moving actor, uh, we're changing our position based on tick. But what happens when our tick is actually infrequent or fluctuating? This is easy to actually demonstrate if we go to our project settings and we bring up our general settings under engine. Then we have a frame rate issue or issue frame rate setting available to us here where we can get a fi fixed frame rate and we can set that frame rate. So we can see at approximate what speed our box is moving right now. If I were to reduce this frame rate to 10, you can see that it is getting choppy but in addition to that, it is actually moving slower than before. That's because our box was set up in such a way that it is only supposed to be moving a certain amount of units every time the tick gets called. So if I get only a sixth as many ticks, that means it will be moving one sixth of the speed. This is actually a common problem of older games where they made use of the update uh, loop, which is essentially the, the tick in Unreal Engine, I suppose, uh, where if you had a lot of things on the screen at once, then your your game would not be able to process everything like that and, and the frame rate would drop and you would have more time to think about what you were doing and making the game easier. So it's, a, it's an old problem. So how do you solve this? Well, there are many ways actually. Uh, one of the more straightforward ways is if this is some code that you need to run in your event tick, you need to make use of your delta seconds. Delta seconds is the amount of time that has passed since the last frame was rendered. Meaning that if you take this and bring it down to this code example, for example, here, and we hook it up here, this is similar code. The only difference here is that it will take a input, the delta seconds, multiply it by some speed here. This is not the same speed as above, but it is a speed. And then use that 
as its uh, delta offset for setting the new actor uh, position. That means it will be consistent regardless of what kind of frame per second we have. So this is our frame per second speed. This is our speed at 15 frames per second. And if we bring out the project settings again, and we go to general settings, and we go to frame per second, and we set this back to 60, the speed will be the same, it will just be smoother because it is no, no longer code that is tick dependent as part of its logic. So that's one approach. There are several others. Um, some of them are, if we remove the tick completely here, we can see that I put up here something called uh, a timeline. A timeline is similar to a tick. It will be running code according to the, the timeline that you have. In this case, I have just have a simple timeline that goes from the value 0, 1, back to 0 over the time of 2 seconds. This allows me to have a output here, and this is also looping, which you can see by this icon. So I can use this as sort of my driver for setting my actor position. So if I were to hook this up and play, then you can see that I have a similar result to before. Uh, but this using a timeline, I would not consider a performance improvement, rather a maintainability uh, uh, solution. You're, you're keeping your tick clean because our tick is over here and it's disconnected, so it's easy to add something to it if you really need to. And this way you can keep it separate from logic that needs to be tick-like, right? Uh, in addition to this, we could also make use of something called a timer. So we could, for example, use something like um, uh, use a uh, timer by event. Let's actually cut that and put that down here. Uh, I disconnected this, yes. Actually, let's put it up here. It, it'll be a little bit messy, but yeah. So set timer by event. So on begin play, we can say that we want to start some kind of a, a timer. And we can say that we want to have it running every 0 0.1 seconds. We can say it should be looping. And then we can take this code down here and we'll just put it up here so it's easier to hook into. So our event is going to be a... This is probably a bad example. Let's take this one. Uh, custom event and then run uh, timer so we hook this up so this is running the original code that we had which is a certain amount of units not taking into considering delta seconds and we'll put this one a little bit closer so what we say here is we're going to call on an event in this case our timer event on begin play and we're going to do it every 0 0.1 seconds meaning 10 times per second right and it's going to be looping which means that it will go in here and it will change the position of the cube. So what, what is the benefit of this as opposed to timer? Well, this one is again not, th this is like using delta seconds for your tick. Um, because a timer will be called based on the time that you set, not on a delta seconds, which means that if multiple parts, multiple, um, if the time is so low that between two different calls of looping or ticks, uh, this has been essentially executed multiple times, it will still keep in, it will keep the pace that it's supposed to. It will not break like the first tick did. So this one will also keep your, uh, your speed consistent despite infrequent tick or rendering frames, right? Or frames per second. So, Timer is what I would call a performance improving um, solution to tick because here you can set the kind of timer that you want. So if you had a game that was running at 120 frames per second and you set it to 0 0.1, instead of getting 120 updates, you're going to get 10 updates and 10 updates per second might be enough for most things, right? So uh, having things like this might offset some of the performance issues. Okay, that was a big one. Let's take a look at the third example. Okay, in our third example, we had our event tick running with some code and logic, and we had a delay inside of it. So 
why would you want to do this and what can we do about this? Well, to be honest, this is just an odd behavior. I would just say, don't do this at all. You essentially have a conflict of ideas going on here. You have tick, which executes every frame, and because of this can be irregular in its frequency. And then you have a delay, which wants some code to be postponed for a very specific period of time. Since tick can be irregular, this means that the code after the delay will also now be irregular, depending on the irregularity of the tick. So this example doesn't really have a good alternative uh, for a fix. This is something just you should probably never do. The closest you can probably come to an alternative to this would be something like using a timer like we used in our previous example and redo this code completely. Okay, so we have a project running. We might not have been aware of take earlier. What can we possibly do to fix an existing project? Well, there are some tools available to us, and one of these things is dump ticks. Uh, dump ticks is, uh, let's just sh first show off this map. So here I have a map with four different actors, uh, represented by these four different meshes. And these are a little bit different. They're fairly empty actors all by themselves. We have an actor here called actor with tick. Now this tick actor over here, we have a tick inside of it, and we can hook up some code to it like so. We have an actor tick disabled, which means that it looks identical to the other one. The difference here is that under class uh, defaults, we have the start tick with tick enabled set to false, unlike over here where we actually have it set to true. But other than that, the, the tick logic is the same, which is essentially just incrementing a value. We also have two other actors. One is called tick unused, which is the tick has not been hooked up to anything. So it's just hanging around here gray. And we have another one here where called actor tick deleted where I've deleted the tick event all by itself. So if we were to go into our console command here and type in dump ticks, we can in our output log see that we have initiated a command dump ticks and it will display for us all the actors and components existing in the game that are relevant to the event tick, showing off a summary saying that there are 25 different things that have tick somehow mm, managed, I guess I can say. Uh, 22 of these have tick enabled and three of these have tick disabled. In this log, you can see all of the different actors and among these we can see among uh, BP actor tick disabled, which is this actor. And we can see uh, BP actor with tick. But these are the only two ones we actually see here. So. Actor with tick and actor disabled, meaning the actor that we have set the tick to be enabled and running tick appears there. Uh, let's see here, it's this one. And here it will say that our actor with tick has tick enabled. When it comes to our actor tick disabled, it will note that it is disabled. So these are the two ones that appear. If you have an actor where you have not actually hooked up the event tick, like in the actor with tick unused, the comment here says that it will not be called. So this one will not be showing off in the dump ticks uh, process. And the one where we have actually manually deleted the tick as well will not appear in this dump tick command. So that's like a, a, a way for you to identify if you have maybe a lot of actors that appear or certain actors that appear a lot. It's an easier way to, to uh, identify problems uh, than just going through each blueprint by themselves. So to finish off with the tick, we're going to go through some of the settings so you get some understanding of them because these are important. Uh, in class settings, if you go to event tick, uh, sorry, in, in a blueprint class, you can see that we have start with tick enabled and this we know what it's all about. It's if we're actually going to be making use of the tick or not. We have a tick interval. This is actually an alternative to improving your performance when it comes to ticks, because here you can set a minimum amount of time that will be required before this tick gets called again. So if you set something like 0.5 seconds, this means that the tick for this will happen at most every 0.5 seconds. But since tick can be irregular, it could be much less than that as well. But that's one way to reduce the, the frequency of ticks getting called. 
You have some other options here, allow tick for begin play, and you have tick when passed. So this is of course related to if you have a passed game or not. You also have a allow tick from dedicated server. We're not going to go through those too much. Those are not that important for now. We're going to be talking a little bit about tick groups. Tick groups give us four different options. And a tick group is uh, you set your tick to be one of these different groups and all different ticks that exist in the same group will all be called before all, before all the other ticks get called in the ne next group and then the next group and then the next group and so on. This allows you to have ticks um, working in a sort of sequence if that is a necessary need that you have. There are some other options to this. If you right click and type in uh, prerequisite and type it correctly like add tick prerequisite actor over here and prerequisite component. This way you can also create a dependency where you say that you want to have your tick happen after another actor has had their tick handled as well. So something to be aware of, although it's probably not going to be that very common in usage. So some final thoughts on tick. In the end, using tick is not a bad thing. It is essential for certain things like physics simulations and such. But it is important to know what needs to be using tick and what does not, and when you do not need to use tick, what alternatives that you have available to you. That's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.